Hi everyone, I'm here in Dallas, Texas, and we're going to go to Trinity Ceramic Supply and pick up some clay. Uh, I normally pick up about 500 pounds at a time. Well, hopefully they'll have what I need and uh, I'll take you along. Thanks. Okay, so we're here at Trinity. Uh, it's just a warehouse type building. But inside there's all the yummy stuff, all the great things that we use to make our pottery. Um, they sell just about everything you can want. Chemicals to make glazes and uh, kiln shelves. I think you can even order kilns here, but I got mine somewhere else. Initially, I got them from Craigslist, and uh, and then I purchased some from another manufacturer. So uh, we're going to take a look inside. Okay, guys, so we got all the stuff inside the Trini Ceramics. We got tools and glazes. All kinds of fun stuff. Different brands. So here are a lot of Amico's. And then we've got the stroker coats. They're from Mako. We've got tools. Like I said it's kind of a haven. If you don't have a supply place by you and you just have to use the internet to shop, you're missing out. We're really fortunate. Only I live about maybe an hour max away from the shop. Oh, we've got great stuff. Lots of little punches. So, I use those for my berry bowls. And we've got more over there. So, it's just a great resource. They've got our, you have, um, pyrocones. cones. That's what I was thinking. So, People often ask about the cones and how do we know what temperature our kilns are firing to. We use these these little um, cone packs. So they look like that. The little bars. And you can set them in your kiln set or you break them apart. And then that's what fits inside. It tells the temperature of how hot the kiln's heating up to. And they have someone who makes mats different designs used for hand building. So I paid for the clay and now I have to go around the side of the warehouse to where the forklifts can bring it down to my van and load it up. Okay, so I am organizing my van trying to get things so we can um, Put everything in. Let's see, it's gonna let me flip you around. Nope. Okay. So in my van the seats kind of fold down. Make it really easy. And we're gonna put the stuff right in there. So each of these boxes are 50 pounds, and I'm going to get 10. 10 boxes. 10 boxes. So I'm grateful for the help getting it in the van, because I have to take it all out of the van. <laughs> so when we're done. Alright, so it's pretty loaded up. So I could probably put a little bit more weight in the back but um, I just don't like to. It really does change how the van drives or any truck. Okay, so my phone died. <laughs> so yeah, so putting a lot of weight into the vehicle um, does change how much time you need to stop and how the van reacts like in traffic and going back and forth from Fort Worth to Dallas is a lot of traffic a lot of times, so I don't like to load it up um, too much. I'd rather just come back again. Always something good over there. So this is some 
sometimes the traffic we get. <laughs> it's only three in the afternoon. So I stack it up on the cart and that is 500 pounds, 10 boxes. And I made these, um, they're like moving dollies, but that way I can scoot it around. It still takes a bit of effort, but I get it moved around and uh, kind of put it around the studio where there's a little bit of room. Normally I put it right there between the um, side roller and the work tables. And you can see I was down to, what's that, 125 pounds, that's it. So those two boxes on the table were the last from last month. That's all I had left. So, so there it is in place. It's really important to um, rotate your clay. Don't let it sit too long. It definitely will start to get stiffer and harder to throw with, for sure. If you're hand building, it probably doesn't matter that much, but... For wheel throwing, it's nice to have good soft clay, easier on your hands. Okay, y'all. So that's a day of picking up clay. Uh, I just got finished teaching some classes and bringing it all in. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.